It was down, then it was rebounding, and it ended mostly flat. The Dow Jones Industrial Average closing down 82 points at 24,801. S&P 500 also down, but just a point, ending the day at 27.26. And the Nasdaq up 24 points, finishing at 7,396. Market analysis now. Jim Lowell is the Chief Investment Officer at Advisor Investments and the editor of FidelityInvestor.com. He joins us from the newsroom. Hi, Jim. Hey, Brian. So what, tariff talk, cone leaving, what's moving the markets? <laughs> Oh, I think tariff talk, cone leaving, cone being a globalist, uh, and fear of a trade war, clearly creating a disruption in the status quo of the marketplace. This is a market that typically doesn't like uncertainty. This is a president that loves on a daily basis to deliver uncertainty to the market. So I think we're just going to have to get used to the uh, event-driven, the news-driven kinds of volatility and its spillover effects into the market. That said, we had several key economic reports that continue to suggest that this is an economy that is growing measurably and well, but not yet in, uh, threatening to overheat. And so I think against that backdrop, hopefully we'll see a more rationalized version of the kinds of tariffs that this president was talking about just last week. You mentioned carve-outs, uh, obviously a lot of calls for tailoring, tapering, targeting uh, lower, more, less onerous tariffs for uh, those of our allies. Hopefully, some of that reason will prevail. And you talked about reports. We did get some uh, some reports today, right? So ADP's private sector jobs report not only surprised uh, consensus estimates to the upside, but they also revised the prior month's read up. Uh, and what that reflects is a job market that is in full federal. This is uh, a fully employed economy. And we had something called the Beige Book. That's the largest compilation of anecdotal economic evidence. And really inside of there, we saw most districts uh, point to the fact that Businesses are raising wages of those that are in their employ and raising wages uh, in order to try and attract uh, employees to meet the demand for their goods and services. So wage inflation remains a potential threat, but it hasn't been realized quite yet in the market. And then we saw consumer credit, consumer the driver of our economy, uh, basically doing what they typically do in the months of January, February, pay off their holiday spending bills. Right. Um, so credit was lower. Uh, that's a healthy sign, especially set against what we talked about last week in terms of the savings rate uh, rising. And when you talk about the wage growth against those jobs numbers, it just it's it just it's common sense, right? It's <laughs> economics 101. If people are have their jobs and you need more people, wages are going to have to go up a bit. That's right. And with the with that increase in wages comes the potential threat for inflation, but it's down the road. It's not front and center. Nevertheless, uh, inflation and tariff, those two themes, continue to uh, lend volatility to this marketplace. So what are we looking at tomorrow? We get jobless claims, weekly jobless claims, typically not a market mover, but we only have two more days, Thursday and Friday, to hear what, in fact, the, the tariffs might look like and what then the uh, potential trade war threats may be. But I would say uh, take a calm, measured approach to anything that this president says and any reaction to it that the market manifests. Because we'll keep in mind the devil is in the details, and maybe we'll get some details. You never know. Let's hope. Jim Mole, Advisor Investments, thanks. Thanks, Brian.